Hello Nippies, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Nips, a freelance artist. And that is so weird to do with the camera on because I usually don't film with it on. But if you read the title, you are correct. Today we're gonna to be doing an expressions tutorial. And I get asked for this very, very often. And so we are here to finally make it. So I'm really, really nervous. This is my first kind of formal tutorial. So hopefully it goes well. And if you've always wanted to bring your characters to life, then stick around and let's get to it. All right, before we start, I thought I'd show you guys a couple examples of my work so that you have an idea of what my art looks like, the art style, and if you guys will be interested in this tutorial based on that. Um, I have a web comic called Offsell. It's 18 plus, so be careful, um, at offsellcomic.com. And I have already created some expression sheets, albeit pretty sketchy, they're not complete yet. Um, so you can have an idea of what my expressions look like in general. These are some of my characters. I have 13 of them on the website if you wanna check them out. They're in the cast tab. Um, and these are all gonna be completed later, but um, it's basically to flesh my characters out a little bit. All right, so why am I showing you all of this? And the first point before I even start here, you have a bunch of beautiful art by so many lovely artists who you should go check out. So many different unique uh, styles all over the artistic spectrum. And the reason I say this and the reason I show my art is because the most one of the most important things that I would say about creating expressions and creating art in general is to take your art style into consideration. It is so important for you to recognize that your art does not have to look like everybody else's and to know that rules about anatomy and everything else are just there as a guide and you can break these rules to fit your art style and to fit your liking and i say this because i feel like sometimes when drawing we get sometimes stressed out by the rules like is this correct is it um is it okay proportionally and this and that and we kind of put our own desires about our art style into the back burner so I know a lot of you young artists or new artists are usually struggling with your art style and saying, I wanna find my art style. What is my art style? What does it look like? And you kind of force it. And I'm gonna sound like a boomer here, but I'm 32. So back in my day, I definitely struggled with this as well. And a lot of us really do. And the easiest way, easiest, is to just forget about it. Just draw what you like keep drawing it, go with your curiosities, go with your instincts, and your art style will find you. Um, and I wish it wasn't as cliche, <laughs> it didn't sound as cliche as it does, but I promise you that is exactly how art style comes to be, in my opinion, because art style is just a pattern of your interests and your habits and your preferences as an artist. So. If you just continue to follow that, your art style will come through. And if you apply that to expressions, which is what we're gonna be covering in this, because you can apply it to everything, but we're gonna be covering expressions here, then your expressions will take a very unique feel and your characters will come to life in your own unique way. And so I'm showing you all of these beautiful art styles because you'll see from one artist to another, you have such a huge range of um, expressions all uh, executed in such a different way and yet they're all super super expressive so don't feel pressure to do things by the book textbook everything so that is my big uh, important point to keep in the back of your mind as you start working on expressions, working on bringing your characters to life and just going through your artistic journey in general. All right, so before, 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 before we get into the tutorial, I know there's so many disclaimers, but before we actually get into the drawing portion, I want to say that this is not an anatomy tutorial, so which if you want a separate one, I guess let me know down below and we will make a separate anatomy tutorial. But this is just going to be an expressions tutorial. So I'm not going to go into the anatomy of the head, the face, uh, etc. But I do think there are some very important markers in the head that are going to be crucial to kind of how I explain how 
I personally go through with my process of drawing expressions and bringing my characters to life. So for today, I will only be covering those important landmarks of the head. So I would say you can have a head here and then halfway, usually you have the eyes. We're gonna do really, really cute the eyes here because this is just to explain the landmarks. So then you have the nose is usually halfway down between oops, between the head and the chin so you have the bottom of the nose here and then you have the eyebrows here slightly above the eyes and at the bottom of the nose to the top of the eyebrows you have the ears yeah Usually, it's easier to explain that halfway between the nose and the chin, you have the mouth. It's slightly higher, I would say, so somewhere around here is where we have the mouth, but for all intents and purposes, halfway down is halfway between the eyes, chin, nose, halfway nose, chin, mouth. Usually pretty simple. We can give them some, them some hair. <laughs> The other landmark that I think is important is also the eyes. So here we don't have regular sized eyes, but if we were to do this, usually in between here, we have the width of one eye. So usually that's important. Then if you look sideways, we'll go ahead and we'll move this over here. Usually if you have a profile view, oh, usually if you have a profile view here, then halfway, in the middle of the head is where we have the ears and if you want to well it's not exactly i didn't really align them so let's not do that but if you have this here and you have the nose here then the nose here our eyebrow and just like we had before no uh, eyebrow nose is where you have the ear then behind the middle line is where we have the ear and this is all like I'm saying, this is all a guide. You have to remember this is just like the ideal face because we're gonna get into how you can take these rules and guidelines to break them and create characters that have their own unique anatomy, facial structures, emotion, and how altering these can just bring characters to life in general. But I would just keep these things in mind so that way, it's easier for you to kind of have like a template with which to start creating characters or molding expressions. So here we go. And finally for the drawing portion. So go ahead, open a clean canvas and we're gonna do an exercise in order to do this tutorial. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out a mirror. And this is one of my favorite things to do because for me, seeing the body in motion is one of the best ways to get an idea of how anatomy in general works because you get to see the muscles in movement, wrinkles, folds, angles, lighting, and everything. And sometimes a 2D picture doesn't really do that as well. And so I always have a mirror beside me in order to use it for reference of, you know, even my hands or anything that I need an anatomy reference really quick. And what I like to do sometimes when I'm drawing a facial expression is to pull out the mirror and make those faces and see what is going on. Even when I'm drawing sometimes, I will make these faces as I'm trying. And I know this is an artist dream, so there's probably some of you out there that do the same thing. If you don't have a mirror, go ahead and grab your phone. This is something that I do often as well if I don't have a mirror on me um, or I need to like take a picture. Sometimes you want to just see the image like you have a pose or something in your in your mind and you just don't want to constantly make the face into the mirror then go ahead put it in selfie mode and just make the face take a picture and then keep it beside you for reference so i'm going to go ahead make some faces into the mirror follow along with me make some faces of your own and pick three of your favorite ones and try to do uh as wide a range as possible and then make sure that the three that you pick also have a pretty good range. So we can go ahead and follow along together and see where we go. 
All right, now that we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the three that I picked. So I tried to get quite a wide range. I know I made some faces with like several angles, but I'm trying to keep it simple. So I tried to pick three of the more straightforward faces and go with those. So what we're gonna do first is explain, I'm gonna make another, yet another disclaimer, is that this process is my own. Um, I do not claim for this to be the objective way to do it, the best way to do it, or any of that. I want you guys to keep in mind that I am just sharing my personal process and you can pick and choose what you like from here. Take all of it, take none of it, um, take it and mold it, whatever you guys want. But I want you guys to know that this is just my own personal process and you can come up with your own process and many other artists have their own as well. So don't feel like this is the one and true way to do something. I know most of you already know that and that might just be common sense to say, but I know some of us sometimes need a reminder and if you don't already know that, I don't want you to guys uh, to think that I'm making this under that premise. So what I usually do when I have an expression or I want to make an expression is I start with what I think most people call like a wireframe, right? And we'll take what I explained earlier, which is basically the basics of the human head, and I'll throw it really quick together as landmarks where everything is. So. We'll go ahead and we'll do our three circles. And I got to make sure that I look over there so that I'm not covering anything in uh, in the process of drawing with my camera in the way. So I'll go ahead and make three circles here. And what we'll do for the eye portion, we know that it's um, at the center of from the top to the bottom uh, of the chin. I'll use a curved line if necessary. We'll see that the first picture and the third picture require curved lines if the face is in an angle that isn't straightforward, right? So this one, we have a slightly up curved head. This one, we have slightly downward. And then this one, we have straight forward. So I didn't even pick these intentionally because of that. And I guess it's going to work out pretty well. Um, Aside from that as well, I didn't really mention this earlier, but especially now since we have kind of straightforward faces, but you also want to do this um, if you have kind of like uh, different like side facing angles is to decide where the middle of the head is, right? So because these are all straightforward pretty much, uh, we don't really need to do this, but um, we can do that. Another landmark that I didn't really touch on, but this third picture is gonna kind of require, if it's helpful, not everybody finds this helpful, but I usually kind of struggle with shapes a little bit, so it does help me personally, is to kind of create this like top part of the head. Now, we'll notice now that the, the curve here is probably not as like exaggerated as it should be, but creating this like top top part of the head kind of makes you visualize more like that it's not straightforward yeah same thing you could probably do here just add a little like circle here to show you that we've got a bottom plane going on here right so the next thing that i usually do we'll just do like kind of the little circles for the eyes here and then we'll start adding our curves, right? You want everything to be kind of parallel so that it matches the angles and everything match. So we'll do that. Maybe a little bit higher as well, like this. And then we'll do this. It's not exactly the same, but we'll do like that. And this is starting to not be in the angle that I want, right? So feel free to mess with the, the angles a little bit more. And then we'll do this and we'll just put the, the general gist here. And we want to make sure that the curves are all going, not just for the face, but for the ears as well. So you wanna bring this ear down as well here, right? To really signify, you'll see here that it doesn't seem like it's exactly straight with the nose here because the head is like curved down. So we want to really bring those ears down. We're not going to work with the neck, I guess, if you want to add it here just for for visual purposes, you could. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next one Add our eyes. This is this one is pretty straightforward. 
So, and we want to keep the shapes basic. That's usually what I do. Just you want to have the general gist, the shapes, the composition of where everything is. And don't, don't try not to stress too much about like the details or anything. Probably gonna have to move my tablet because the camera and everything is making me, my hand position be kind of weird. So hopefully it doesn't uh, deter my ability to, to draw this properly, but. And this is pouting, so technically we want this to be a little bit higher than normal. We're gonna go ahead and do this here, just to signify that there's like some pouting there. And we'll do this, of course. Ears should be pretty standard here, and doesn't have to be exact. And then here we'll have the going down. Now this one's a little bit harder. This one is slightly turned to one side. We're not going to do that. It's going to be a little too complicated right now. It's too slight, but I'm going to actually touch on that later because there's a part of this tutorial that that is going to come into play. So we'll, we'll talk about that after. So we want to make sure now that our, um, our angle is curved down, the lines get closer. So you want to really exaggerate that. This one, the lines aren't like, it's the angle is not too far down, but we're gonna go ahead and um, just try and make sure that we have at least a little bit, um, maybe exaggerate it a little bit more just for the sake of what we're gonna explain later, right? And then we'll do, like this, and like the first face, you want to go backwards, right? Our, our circle, our sphere is going downwards, so that means the back line is higher, which makes our ears be higher. So, or appear higher, rather, right? And so, we'll have that, and then we'll have the this here, and we'll kind of, not that this is part of the tutorial, but I guess it like kind of helps with uh, the visualization of the, the the expression. So I guess we can do that here as well. Yeah. And then we'll go ahead, move this a little bit over here, maybe make it slightly. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and stretch it. <laughs> Got to use the tools that you have at hand, you know? All right, let's go ahead and make this slightly smaller to match the other ones. I think the middle one now is a little too large, so we'll go ahead and try to match these a little bit. All right, now that we have the templates, um, we're going to go ahead and apply the actual features of whatever character or person that we are going to draw. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose some of my characters in order to get these expressions done and also talk about some extra things that I do once the expressions in the drawing gets more defined. If you don't have an original character, you can maybe even pick an existing fictional character um, or you could just draw yourself or just draw a basic default uh, human and the principles will still apply, so it'll be good exercise. Now, out of my characters, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through these and see which one uh, fits who best. So I think for this one, and I'm gonna try and pick characters that have more or less like different facial structures so that this, this uh, exercise can be a little bit more um, telling. I would say this one, maybe we can go with Yotaro on this one. Um, I kind of have an expression like this on his expression sheet, so maybe this is not a good pick, but um, we'll go with this one. Um, or actually, no, let's do this one. Let's do it like this. I think this this maybe encompasses something that I want to explain as well. So let's do this. Let's do Jet here, and then we'll do Pinko here. I would do Yosef here, but if you if you know my characters and you know Yosef, you can't really see his eyes. So it's going to be a little bit uh, kind of not really what we, what we want to practice. So the next part is we're going to go ahead and create a new layer so that we can start refining this. Now, if you're working digitally, you already know, make a new layer, make this layer lower the opacity. And if you're working traditionally, um, usually what I do is I work 
this wireframe as kind of a colored pencil layer or a colored lead layer as well and then add on top of it um, like normal dark pencil and if you're only working in pencil what you could do is use a kneaded eraser and go ahead and tap it so that way you can lower the opacity and then refine it on top so what we're going to do is go ahead and do that we're going to lower the opacity on this a bit and then make our new layer just making sure that everything is in the right layer okay so when we draw these characters what i'm thinking about is taking their normal like baseline anatomy and applying it to the expression on the paper so try not to overthink all the wrinkles folds like micro expressions try not to think about that so basically what i do is i do like the wire framing for my character specifically on top of the default wire framing right so what we do now here is we'll do okay yodaro right yodaro's eyes are pretty large and they're pretty round so we'll do this i don't know how funny we want to make this one but right work smarter not harder okay <laughs> work smarter not harder okay one lesson that we're gonna learn today that doesn't have to do with expressions and so we're also gonna learn that remember like i said this is just a guide so we're gonna go ahead and lower his eyes a bit because he's much younger and we really want that um that kind of age to come through right we're not gonna worry too much about the lines i started worrying there Yotaro has pretty thick eyebrows, so we're going to go ahead and just do this. And like I said, we're not going to worry too much about the details right now. I probably should be doing this in a different color. Let's go ahead and do that because I feel like we're going to do an extra layer on top of that. For those of you that don't know, usually the first layer, I call it S. That's our wire layer. This is S2. Usually is what I do. So it's like a second sketch layer. And then we'll have a line art or S3 on top of that. So S2, usually what I do is I'll do it in like a very dark, like indigo color. So let's just keep true to that because I thought we were going to go straight to line art, but we'll lock the layer, go ahead and make that darker. And usually I do this because sometimes working with black straight from a sketch kind of makes your mind at least mine it like stresses me out and it makes me think like i can't make a mistake this is final so sometimes working in a different color kind of helps ease that so i'm gonna go ahead and do that so i also haven't flipped the canvas so i'm really scared to flip it and then find out that it's trash so <laughs> all right we're gonna go ahead and do this yodaro's nose is pretty round and um and cute so he's got like a bubbly nose going so we're gonna go ahead and just do that and then in general we're gonna go ahead and fill his head out i don't know if I, we want to like fill in the hair today i think it's more about facial expressions but these characters hairs are not really that complicated and hairstyles are not that complicated so maybe we could now yotaro has a pretty round face so we'll go ahead and we'll do that and then of course we can just do the neck he's pretty skinny tiny so i think with just a basic neck here is fine and we can just do this Oop. this angle of drawing is kind of hard because my hand is i'm like leaning forward into the camera as you can see i should probably back the camera up a little bit so i'm not like in your face and then we'll do the pouties here We'll do his little ears. He usually has pretty large ears. They're very cute um, and round, so we'll make them slightly larger. In general, y Yotaro's anatomy is pretty, pretty like cartoony. It's just very bubbly and fun, so we'll go ahead and we'll do that. He has some gold earrings here. Usually they're larger, a little thicker um, to kind of show, like match him a little bit more, you know? He's pretty round i think if you had to describe yotaro in a way it would be round he's just round in general so we'll do that and th 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 these are uneven and it's kind of bothering me and now it's too large it's fine it's gonna be fine surely all right let's just leave it like that 
And then we can do the lines. Like I said, not an anatomy tutorial, so I'm not even gonna bother. Usually with sketches, I don't really go too in depth with, you know, how this is supposed to look. So don't worry too much about where things go. As long as it looks pretty realistic, then we're good. So this is basically, we'll do, we'll also do like a shadow here to kind of show that there's like a space between the neck and whatnot. We're flipping it and then realizing it looks horrible. So we're gonna go ahead and fix, <laughs> fix the head shape. Everything else is like not too bad, so. So let's move on to the next one. So we're gonna go ahead and do Jet. Now Jet is very, just, she's just very hot. So her eyes are very much like very uh, fox eyed and but she's also a very a very fun character so we're gonna go ahead and try to kind of show that she's got a little beauty mark here we're gonna put she's got thin eyebrows so we're not gonna worry too much about those and then i want to show how we are now going about this expression because this is another thing that i really want to uh, kind of hone in on, especially with these. Now, try not to compare the intensity of the pictures that we took and the references that you have versus what you're drawing. Try not to get ahead of yourself. This is what I explained earlier. Don't think about it too much because if you think about that, it's gonna stress you out. So first you want to build up. So this is kind of a process that I've named for myself in order to make it make sense in my head called molding. So I basically just start with a foundation and you're basically sculpting your expression. So sometimes like, at least for me, when I think of the finished product and I try to go straight to the finished product, I get really stressed out. So instead I basically see the finished product in my head and you create shapes and start to work your way up towards that and add more and more detail and more and more nuance to your drawing. So I'm trying my best now to not think about that um, so much and just kind of lay out our foundation. So another thing also is these expressions are just guides and it's a little bit something that we're, um, a little bit of something that we're gonna talk about as we develop these and hopefully don't forget, but um, these expressions are just guides, okay? So try try not to feel confined by the expressions that you have in front of you. Don't feel like you have to do that exact expression. Um, okay, so we have this. She has pretty standard sized ears, I think. Um, I think maybe we can make them a little bit smaller. Then we want to, she has a pretty, the nose for the most part. And I think we're kind of turning the nose up a little bit, a little bit higher than, than what we have here. Mm, all right, so we'll do, she has a pretty thin nose, so I guess we can, now you're starting to see one of my weaknesses. Drawing noses sometimes is a nightmare, so. Let me just do the basic. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself now. I'm doing the thing I told you guys not to do. So let's do the face. So she has like a pretty general, she has very yummy, luscious lips. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add, we're gonna add those in. And then we're gonna go ahead and draw her head here hopefully i'm not too close to the camera because i see it in my peripherals and it's kind of scaring me so we know that the chin is going to come down here oh i didn't really explain <laughs> in the in the anatomy breakdown but i guess i guess we'll need to do we'll need to do a separate video there's too many things you can explain guys there's too many things you can break down now Jet's face is like slightly, slightly angular, but not really. So we're gonna go ahead and soften it just a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and do this. Now, this part we want it to be, we want it to be 
a little bit higher because the ears are supposed to be kind of angled backwards, yeah? So as long as it's that, we're good. And then we're gonna go ahead and do this. And then try not to add too many staple things to the... It is getting very difficult to draw in this position. I might actually have to go ahead and swap the angle of my tablet. Okay. And then for the last one, we're gonna go ahead and do Pinko. So Pinko is a very, very <laughs> angry individual, which is why we're gonna put him here. And Pinko's face is also very angular. So he basically <laughs> looks like a box. And one of the things that I didn't cover, but usually your cheekbones can come down and hit the sides of your chin here. So sometimes when you want to come up with different face shapes, it's it's uh, very useful to kind of do this and figure out where where your um, where your sorry where your chin is gonna be and where your cheekbones are gonna head out. So he's got a very square and angular jaw. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we have the top of his head here. And we're really gonna do, we're gonna emphasize his, the angle of his head here with this. We want to make sure, ooh, we wanna make sure that we really are seeing the angle of his head and really understanding it. So I guess we can do like a little dot here to kind of symbolize that. His face is very angular, but also very short. So we don't want to go too far into, into making his face too long. So we're gonna go ahead and now do the ears. Pinko's ears are also pretty large. Pinko and Yotaro are um, pretty similar in that regard. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do this, except Pinko's ears are slightly less friendly looking. I'm not really sure how to describe that, but for now, like we said, we're not gonna add too many personality, too much personality into our characters right now. We're just doing the basics. Let me go ahead and mirror this before I lose my mind. And as you can see, this is very off, but we can fix that here. I love how I... <laughs> I gotta make sure always always be flipping it, you know, sometimes you you'll surprise yourself um, I haven't evolved that much yet, you know been drawing this whole this whole uh, Time this whole decade and still can't draw a proper symmetrical face, but that is another point that I'm gonna hammer in on so It's it's all part of the plan. It's all part of the plan. I just made up If anyone knows about Lee. All right so let's go ahead and do that. And now we're going to do the eyebrow line and his nose. Now, Pinko's nose is pretty angular as well. We're not going to do anything else other than, this, this expression is probably the most um, layered that we have. So we don't, we don't wanna do too much right now because it's gonna, it's gonna get pretty complicated later. So Pinko is also Asian. So we gotta make sure that we kind of do that properly as well and right now it's not starting to look like him too much so we're gonna have to make sure that we edit that and make sure that we get his true essence because even even in the even in the like uh rough wireframe doodle of your character. I feel like the essence should still be there. So, and as you can see, this is probably why it doesn't look like him. <sighs> oh Lord. I know what I'm doing, I promise. I don't, so you probably shouldn't be here. This is, this is proof that sometimes the process just isn't. It's not as easy as some people make it look, you know? So we want to make sure that we are getting the essence. I'm going to go here. I'm going to just mess with his eyes until I get like the general angle that I want. Yeah. So this is going to take a little bit. 
and we'll do I think this is gonna be a little bit difficult I, I usually when I do Pinko's face and even Yosef's it's more of like like we want to bring this jaw like forward so in order to do that I think we have to make the jaw even slightly kind of out like this I think this is gonna be the hardest of the expressions so we're gonna have to continue working with this one until we get basically the essence that I want kind of like this Probably gonna have to time lapse through a bit of this. We're gonna cheat a little and we're gonna warp it because I'm not really getting the vibe that I want. We're gonna cheat as well. Work smarter, not, not harder. Okay. okay, we'll merge it in. We want something like this. I think this one requires a little bit more work. Um, just to get it correct because this this expression is a little bit specific so we're gonna go ahead and do this he's got a piercing here so we're gonna go ahead and start this one I, I'm gonna keep going on it until I feel the essence some of them are easy and some of them are not Pinko's a little bit hard to draw especially in this angle, so. All right, this is more or less close enough to what I want, so we're just gonna leave it at that. Pinko's pretty much pretty pretty close to what I envisioned. This one took a lot longer because of the angle, and I wanted to make sure to get Pinko like the way I envision him. So it did take me longer, but hopefully, hopefully you guys see that it is a process. No matter how much you've been drawing, sometimes it just happens and you just need to get it right. You've seen, you saw, you saw what it looked like as I flipped it. So it is a problem. It's always gonna be a problem. Though, let me not say that because there are some very God tier artists who never have to deal with this. So let me not speak for them. But now that we have the basic um, kind of sketch, 
portion, the wireframe, if you will, of our characters. Now we are gonna go into the real molding. So like I said earlier, I use molding as a term to kind of help me uh, vocalize and describe and really understand my process in drawing, not just expressions, but just drawing in general. And what I mean by that is we are basically going to make these expressions and characters come to life in the same way that you would sculpting uh, a real life sculpture. And what that means is you're going to continuously refine these, add details, add uh, folds, wrinkles, um, personalized uh, anatomy characteristics and all of that. And one of the things that I want to touch on is the asymmetry because that's something that we're going to be doing now um, as we touch these up and asymmetry basically gives you a sense of realness in my opinion so you'll notice for example if we look through these pictures right you'll see here that i have kind of this like extra like on the side right like my face isn't perfectly symmetrical symmetrical when I make this expression. There's like a tiny little like portion of my lip that sticks out more. Um, for example, you know, this, uh, this fold is not exactly the same as this one here. And you also have like an extra wrinkle, so two wrinkles here that you don't have here, right? So these things like even here, right? My nose is coming up further than it is here. You have more wrinkles here because of this part. You have my mouth is coming up more here, which is also making this go higher. And you have here, for example, you hear, for example, you have this here, even though that's not expression asymmetry, it's still like a design asymmetry. And you have, let's see, what other asymmetrical things can we find? This one, this, I think this facial expression that I made is pretty, pretty symmetrical for the most part, but we can make some adjustments to it, which you'll see um, later when I start actually tweaking this and doing some of the things that I'm talking about. And when um, you make these things uh, asymmetrical in your expressions, it kind of makes your characters feel more real because people are not perfect and they don't look perfect. So that's kind of what I meant by when we do these like head proportions and like the ideal head proportions, they're just that ideals. So no person is going to have those exact proportions. No person is going to have like the same level of eyes, you know, like the, the same level of eyebrows or the same looking eyebrows, you know, like sometimes they say they're cousins, not sisters, you know, um, the same like teeth and in same portions, right? Not everybody's teeth, the teeth are straight. And all of these things, like if you think about those things for your characters or for fan art characters, it will help you bring um a new level of personality to your characters and so this is the portion of the drawing that i start to do that and the portion of the drawing where you think what makes my characters them do they have large noses do they have low brow bones do they have um one eye is smaller than the other. Do they have a specific fold that they get when they smile? Do they have dimples? Do, um, do they have a specific jaw shape that doesn't really usually work the same um, with the ideal um, proportions of the face? Um, do they have a mark on their ears? Are their ears different sizes? Are they low? Does my, all of these things. So. This is the molding part of the drawing process and that's what we're gonna get into now. So on to the next part. So now that we have our S2 complete, we're gonna go ahead and erase that and now we're gonna make our new layer. So our new layer is basically probably gonna be my line art. So I'm just gonna go ahead and name it LA, which is what I usually name my line art layers. And we're gonna finally transition into the dreaded black color. So we're going to go ahead and start off with Jet. So here's where you have to decide. We have this template expression over here, right? And it's just a basic smile, right? 
But now I want to translate this into what Jet would do, right? Jet is a very sassy character. She's fun, she's just like spunky and all that sort of thing, right? So for Jet, this expression is a little too wholesome and too like, it doesn't have like the zest that Jet has. So we're gonna use this as a guide and we're gonna inject some micro expressions which is the next thing that I'm gonna touch up on. And it's basically very, very intertwined with what molding essentially is and asymmetry and all of those things are basically part of like the same group. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're not going to look too much at the expression at the top because it might be distracting. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm even gonna make this even lighter because it might distract us. I'm gonna zoom in out, uh, zoom out a little bit because I also don't wanna add too many details. So we're gonna go ahead, start adding her, her face, uh, her eye shape here. And you'll see me already starting to make the faces. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Um, and we're gonna try and get her shapes. We're gonna look over again. We wanna make sure that we add, you know, use our references as well if we're unsure of where certain folds go. That's kind of the point. So we'll do this. And we're gonna hit the micro expressions. This is like the detailed part and then we're gonna mold further with micro expressions after. So stick with me, stick with me. So we're gonna do our basic shapes here and we're gonna work smarter, not harder, okay? Because this is not the point of the this of this tutorial isn't to, this is not a drawing tutorial, this is an expressions tutorial. So we're gonna go ahead and just focus on that rather than, and you'll see this is already slightly off. So don't worry. And go ahead and mess with it a little bit and I can see already that it's not it's not really what I want yet so we're gonna go ahead and edit this a little bit more and this is not giving the expression that I want so don't be scared if it's not looking exactly how you want it these eyes are not giving what I want either so we're just gonna go ahead and erase it and we're gonna move on to another part sometimes when I get a little demotivated and kind of tilted by what I'm doing. We move on to something else so that I don't I don't uh, get stuck. I make some progression and we can feel good about making progression and then come back to it after. I'm gonna go ahead and tilt this slightly so that way it looks slightly happier. I think her eyes are a little too slanted down. We'll do this. We'll make the face shape here. I really like the, the face shape that I had in the in the sketch. So we'll do. And yes, this is very messy, messy quote unquote line art, but um, we're not going for full blown line art because this video would be very, very long. So this is just a, like pseudo line art essentially, at least for me, because it really depends what your art style is, right? What, what is line art for you might not be line art for me and vice versa. So try not to sweat that too much. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. And then we'll start filling everything in. I sometimes do the copy paste to the jaw because as you can see, my mirroring skills are non-existent. So especially like the front facing, the front facing ones because I have no idea how that works. Every time I think they look good, I mirror it, and then I realize that I have no idea how to draw, so. Let's go ahead and fix this ear a little bit. And then let's erase this. It's giving the impression, excuse me. It's giving the impression of a, just a weird angle, so we'll go ahead and do this. The jaw is a little too square right now. Let's fix that up. And let's kind of fix this angle as well here. 
And right now we're really trying to get the, the general vibe. We'll go ahead and we'll just warp this, yeah? And if you're working digitally, I would say do not be scared to use the tools given to you. Sometimes, sometimes we need to and do not feel bad that you need to do it. That's what your program is for. If you have the tools, use them. Don't let anybody shame you for using them. That's literally what the program is for. Have tools, use them. So I don't really like how this side looks. I was trying to debate which side I liked more. And honestly, I feel like this, this one is just much, much softer and closer to which it looks like. So I'm gonna do that and we're gonna soften this part as well. And I think I like how that looks. So we're gonna go ahead and reference this again. We're gonna just kind of do the same thing. We're gonna extend her body and really get that kind of leaning forward situation. And Jet's nose is like slightly, like it's thin, but not, not like too thin. So, so we'll go ahead and do this and we're not quite there yet with the the nuances of the anatomy quite yet so just bear with me oh hello learning how to draw noses is not what you're here for because as you can see <laughs> as you can see so we'll go ahead and now we're going to start matching her face right here we have a very like wide we can use that as reference I don't have as large lips as Jet, so we're gonna try and keep it as close as possible to. Let's not do that yet. Let's actually just, oh, see, flip it, and then we realize things just don't look the way we want them to. Oh. Yeah. I don't know how exact we want this to be. We want to just keep it like sketchy and just leave it like that. And then we want to do the, the basic shape here to kind of get everything centered. Yeah. Right. And I kind of like this side better, so let's kind of try and emulate that one instead. We want to make sure that it does look like she's like smiling wide, yeah? We still have to fix her eyes because they're not really giving the emotion that I want. So we're going to go back to them in a second. We want to really get that, that cheeky grin here. So we're going to do that. And we're probably going to take this and widen it up this way and really bring that out like this, yeah? And then here, we're gonna go ahead and make this even taller here to really make it so she looks happier, yeah? And then we'll go and reference our, our picture again and we want to maybe lower this a little bit and then we want to bring out her cheeks even more see if we can get that like very cute I want to exaggerate here of course and we want to also the more you do this, I think the more, the more like happy a person looks, you want to really bring those cheeks out. And then we'll do the exaggerated kind of cheekies on the side too, little teeth. And we want to do this kind of like that. I'm gonna make sure we... 
Her, her, for the most part, her mouth is pretty. Her lips are pretty, like, round. We want to. Pretty large, so. And then we will. This. And I don't know how close to the original we wanted to be, but we can definitely see if we can exaggerate this a little bit more. Maybe we can bring the smile slightly less. Like this. Because I think that looks a little too much like Anya. So maybe a little bit less. So it looks a little less forced. And this, this process is what I'm talking about, like molding, right? And try not to let it stress you out. The more you let it stress you out, then the, the worse I think is gonna come out. I usually struggle a lot. Like if I get tilted, then it's just, everything starts to go downhill. So don't worry, it's not gonna be perfect. It doesn't mean you suck. Even though sometimes I think about that, I'm like, why is it that I'm taking so long to draw something so basic, but I promise, just keep keep going and just keep molding it. Just keep going to, to get what you want. See, we're not really getting what we want here. It's a little, like, doesn't look like exactly what I want. It's starting to look like slightly not a little bit creepy. I don't even know. So we really have to start bending the nose here to really fit a smile. Yeah. We have to also kind of like Like I said earlier now, we're gonna, we can go ahead and add a little bit of flavor, right? So we can add a little tongue for Jet. And then we can do something like this. And then we can make one eye wink. Yeah, that seems a little bit more like her. And then what we'll do is because of that, we can bring this eyebrow down. So this is what I mean by molding and by creating micro expressions. We're now making the expression more quote unquote complicated, but we're adding a little bit more flavor to, to our expression by adding asymmetry, by making, making it look more like our character, yeah? So we're making this more and more personal to to who we're drawing and everything just starts to kind of fall fall in line with how we want hopefully and getting to know this this helps with getting to know your characters like so much and here we can add this and you can add some little features of your character just to see if it's really coming to life sometimes Sometimes you need these just to make sure that it's it's really looking like who you're trying to draw. Though there are exercises that I would advise you do that basically draw the face of your character um, without any of their features and see how different, how different your characters look. Do they look unique? Because sometimes the features are what makes your characters look like them rather than the uniqueness of their face. It's a really good exercise. I started doing it. I, I don't know who I saw doing it, but it really made me realize like and learn more about the expressions of my characters. So definitely recommend that exercise if you have not tried it or even heard about it. So we go here, we look at my nose and you see, you see the folding of these upward to make it look more like she's smiling, right? So let's go ahead and follow that example. This is why references are good, you know? Sometimes you need 
to make sure you're following the lines and using that real life reference to get that to get that to get that vibe that you want yeah what we have there i think we need to recenter her face just a little bit and then make sure i think the side of the face is a, the side of the mouth sorry a little bit weird and then we want to kind of fix this a little bit i think it's a little bit strange and now one of the things that i would even add is even go further even further into micro expressions and you add even more lines so like we could even make the side of her mouth here go even further up than the other side right like we can do like a sassy kind of like where the tongue is coming out you can just do something like this yeah like what she's like kind of doing this you know the expression i'm talking about yeah kind of like this yeah and i don't know if i'm gonna like this but sometimes you just give it a go and see see what's up and because of that we'll have something like this have it go kind of higher and maybe maybe you won't like it you can go back right you kind of just feel it out and then here you want to do like a little bit more now because you've got this like all this like bunched up pressure on this side and now you also want to add a little bit more flavor yeah because now now you have like the scrunching of the the nose and the mouth so now we do this all of a sudden you've got that much flavor on that side yeah make sure that this matches here and we do this something like that yeah so you see how we've taken let me mirror it before i move on and realize that it looks trash okay i think the, the this this nose is a little off center we gotta fix it just slightly and then this mouth is like also slightly off center her mouth is like pretty large, but that's kind of the point is we really want this like big toothy smile and depending on how, how like exaggerated and cartoony you want it, oop, you can go bigger, smaller, like it all depends, yeah. So something like that. And then you can add like the little extra things that make them them, you know? gonna add uh, some shadows here like we had in the original she's she usually wears like a choker here so we'll do like a little choker yeah and then we'll do like the back parts of our hoops like dark so we can add some some value uh some value and some shape depth etc and then you can add uh, these and maybe you can give her like tank top strings or something maybe give her like a a chain she likes to wear chains and i'm just doing arbitrary circles here because that's not what this tutorial is about kind of like that yeah and then we can do her hair as well if we really want to and then we'll do like a messy side bun or something yeah Something like this and then we can do like a little hairs like sticking out here and her hair like this and then we can do some hair on the side falling down Ooh. kind of like that and then you can even just do like little hairs like sticking out like that yeah like that and then you can do oh too much there yeah and then maybe you can do like a long piece of hair coming up here yeah and that is jet 
So look at that. So look how we've taken this expression whose picture we took and how we have basically molded it into our own character and added a lot of flavor, the asymmetry, the micro expressions, and really turned it into our own. So that's what I mean by all of these things, right? Just continuously molding and not being scared that your drawing isn't going to look exactly how it is going to look at the end. Um, and to just focus on getting to where you want at the end with smaller steps and build up the blocks to get there. And the more that you do this, the better you get at it and the less stressed out you get when the beginning doesn't look exactly how you want. And you saw, you saw how a lot of these drawings were going, right? Like I had to flip it. It looked like a Picasso drawing. Um, it was just not working out. The anatomy was bad and tr just try your best to not let it stress you out. And I promise it's going to work out great for these next two. Since we kind of went through the whole process with Jet, we'll do a quick like time lapse um, of the other two. So you kind of see that same thing in the process with the other two characters.
So as you can see, we have finished the last two drawings. Hopefully that wasn't a stressful watch. Definitely took me <laughs> a lot longer than I wanted to, but um, you can see the evolution of the expressions on the top and how they were translated to the expressions on the bottom. You can see here we have Yotaro and Pinko. Like I said, Yotaro, the definition of round. And we have Pinko who has a lot of angular features and very angry in general. And the same thing as we did with Jet, you see the top expression, bottom expression, the differences depending on the character and how we've added a lot more like folds, wrinkles, asymmetry in order to really make these expressions come to life and make them a little bit more unique to the characters themselves. We see the middle part, the, the middle expression is a little bit more similar to the original than the first one, but we added a, a couple of tears. We added a little bit of the nose drip here, just the little boogers, make him a little cuter, made the face rounder added those uh, wrinkles and stuff around the mouth to really exaggerate, especially the ones on the ends of the mouth to really exaggerate that like sad pouty kind of expression. And then with Pinko, we didn't go with the exact expression, but we basically got the general gist, really emphasized those like nose, that nose scrunch, uh, made it slightly not angrier but a little like more um aggressive i guess you could say really um you guys probably saw in the speed paint you guys saw me pull out the mirror and try to really get that it's not that obvious because it's a little messy but get that lower jaw kind of forward and make it like more like aggressive just like kind of like that not not too good at drawing it but that was kind of the intent and you see how you have the the square like jaw still short face like i said earlier and kind of how we were talking earlier, like you see how Yotaro's ears are like large and round. And then you have Pinko whose ears are also large, but they're a little bit more, um, a little less friendly. So when you see it, he's got a lot more um, angles that kind of make the character, they give you a certain vibe without having to say much. So you'll see how we made one eye slightly smaller, made the scrunch stronger on one side, and adding these like asymmetries really make the, um, make the expression feel a little less uh, like fabricated, less plastic. All right, that was it for the tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I know I could say so much more and elaborate, but this video would be like eight hours long. But if there's something that you guys want me to go more in depth with, um, there are some other tutorials that I'm thinking about doing, so I'll keep you guys posted on that. Otherwise, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Like if you liked the video, subscribe, join the Nippy family. The more, the merrier, and I will see you guys next video. Bye!